Good morning. This is Mike Warner calling to you from uh, the NASA simulator-based uh, aeronautical engineering teacher workshop. And we're here uh, giving you a little lesson plan that we've put together. My name is Mike Warner. I'm from Tempe High School in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, my background is I'm a math teacher. I'm involved with the robotics team on campus. And uh, we have got a project that we're going to use some of the photography as well as the math as well as the robotics uh, aspect. Aaron? Yes, I'm Aaron Jarvis, also from Tempe High School. Uh, as we said, that the um, today we're going to be talking about what's called photogrammetry, um, modeling the position of an object using the laws of math, the laws of sines and cosines, uh, using stereoscopic imagery. Uh, we're from Tempe High School, and uh, that's located in Tempe, Arizona, the home of Arizona State University. And I uh, ve feel very privileged to have been able to come out here to work with NASA to take a look at uh, how we can implement simulation and models in our classroom to help uh, student achievement. Um, we've been working together with our mentor, Michael Conroy, um, who joined NASA here in 1983 as part of the co-op and the expendable vehicle program and has gone on to work in many different programs and projects uh, including uh, integrating the systems and he's worked with a lot of different people in his office uh, on things um, most recently even including the Mars rover which kind of inspired us also to take a look uh, since we have this background in robotics and um, math and physics, we wanted to take a look at some of those different uh, things there. Um, so, um, taking a look at the Mars rovers, we knew that they had some cameras on board and uh, doing some reading we learned about how photogrammetry is being used to help them navigate and we knew that we'd be able to use this uh, not just on the Mars rovers but also to model things in real world scenarios and so we want to focus in on um, those understandings um, that we can get from uh, things that we do with photography and challenge the students to be able to uh, do some real world scenarios uh, navigating um, bringing in things such as the scientific method and technology as well uh, in terms of what the students are doing the prerequisites uh, we felt that would be good for the students that take on this program would be that they're at least uh, ninth grade and have um, a year of algebra, at least they're in that first year of algebra. Uh, taking a look at some of the images that have actually come off of the Mars rovers, uh, if you have the 3D glasses there handy, th this might be a good time to go ahead and put those on and to check out some of these images that should be able to give you a bit of depth to um, the shape, how round these objects are, also how far away they are. Uh, in the slide there, if you take a look at, if we get uh, behind us, the arm of the rover, uh, you can see over here that there's the magenta and the cyan um, arms, and at the top, they're very far away from each other and out here towards the um, end of the arm they're close together and we know that as these uh, two objects get further away and closer to each other that is due to the fact that the distance is changing and how our eyes focus on those um, is what gives us that depth um, engaging the students uh, we found a website um, from the uh, DLN um, which is the Digital Learners Network, which uh, you can actually get behind the wheel, as it were, of this simulated rover and actually be able to drive around and use photogrammetry to be able to determine the distance between some of these things. Uh, I have a website that we're going to take a look at here um, that uses shows that. I thought I had, still had it up. All right, um, so here's the Digital Learning Network Mars Rover, and it has the image of the little guy there, and has a video that goes in and talks about how uh, middle and high school students can uh, use this for distance learning activities. Um, 
but you know, rather than just focusing solely on this guy, we were more interested in just the photogrammetry aspect of being able to determine things mathematically. So, okay, again, on with the 3D glasses. And here's uh, some of our cohorts from this week and some of the activities that we've been able to do going around the different NASA websites and um, see some of the shuttles here in this shuttle image. You can uh, tell the depth underneath the shuttle of how far back it goes in, in the orbital processing facility. Um, and the scaffolding here uh, underneath it. Uh, as we under, uh, researched photogrammetry, we found other sources that NASA also has uh, using this technique where they have a satellite, actually a set of satellites up in space that they are using to study the sun, which would be available for viewing at stereo at the link website listed there. If I, no, nope, that didn't, didn't open it. Um, but they're using two ident almost nearly identical spacecrafts crafts to produce these two different images that you see here in this picture. They're not identical. And b by putting them into the computer and mapping out the different parts, they're able to um, figure out what the distances are on these objects. Uh, we actually constructed a, a model setup of how you'd be able to do photogrammetry, which is how we captured some of those images that you saw. Uh, it just uses two off-the-shelf uh, digital cameras, um, and we drilled holes into a piece of wood here and used several quarter-inch uh, bolts with um, nuts, wing nuts. wing nuts to be able to attach them into the holes that were already existing in the bottom of the cameras for um, using on a tripod. So we put several holes down here on this end. We also put another hole down here on this end. As we have learned, if we take this camera and move it down to this end, we're actually able to increase the resolution. And that's one of the things that we'd like the students to be able to figure out through the lesson we're going to take take a look at here in a second using the triangles and the law of sines and cosines that the greater those angles are out, the further they're separated, the better they can determine what those distances are. Accuracy. Yeah, it increases the accuracy. Uh, here's a image showing um, the relative position of the Earth and how they launched one of these satellites out in front of the Earth, and they launched another one out behind us. And by knowing this distance with the sun there, they can figure out how far these solar storms and corona are being ejected out from the surface of the sun. Okay, so how do we tie this into uh, what a math class might be? involved in or what students might be looking at. So one of the things we looked at was uh, in the first year of algebra, they learn a little bit about trig relationships. And so they have a relationship of a trig function with the two sides. And so we looked at the geometry of what they were doing and to try to find out if we could uh, apply this to their knowledge of what they were doing. And so we have here a schematic of the two cameras with some objects there. And so what we want to do is we want to focus in on how, what's the distance of that star, but what happens if there are other objects in the field, and so we might be able to not be able to tell with just one camera where that object is if the first, say, the ball was blocking the camera number one from seeing the star, and but if we have the two, two uh, cameras, we might be able to see where that location was, and so by triangulation, we're going to use this. Yes, we could use LIDAR. Yes, we could use maybe acoustics uh, to, to find that in a short distance. Uh, but with, uh, with the camera situation, it might be a cheaper way of going, more economical for it. And so those are something that a student might have access to where the LIDAR or the sonar may not be something that the student would have. And so we're looking at that geometry. And so we're going to use the law of sines and the law of cosines in that relationship. So if we know the distance between the two cameras and we can determine the angles between 
the uh, base uh, line and the two tra trajectories, we can come up with the geometry for the three sides and three angles. So here, if we are defining the, what we'd want kind of have the students identify that this central object and the two cameras, the relationship and their positions is forming a triangle and having them sketch those uh, that down on a piece of paper, we're going to help them to define the uh, angles here, the left angle, the right angle, and the center angle as being the things that they would need to understand. And opposite those three angles, we'd have uh, represented by the lowercase l, lowercase r, and lowercase c, their respective sides um, that we're going to be using there. Um, now, if we, as Mike pointed out, if we know any three of these, we can really figure out any of the others. And so we know this distance of separation in between the cameras, and we're going to be wanting to know, or we'll be measuring these two, from which we can figure out these distances and um, figure out exactly where is the object that we're looking at. Uh, here I have kind of a one of the pictures we took as we are figuring out the Oh, I can't zoom in. That'd be, okay. Um, right here, at this point, we have a small green cap from the top of a water bottle. And this is from one of the cameras that we are taking a look at. And you see the grid that's on top of this, measured off in five degree increments away from uh, this. But in order to do this, in order to find out what the left and right angle are, you have to first calibrate the image, which is a process I'm going to talk about how you would go about doing that with the students here in just a second. Um, so ha presenting them with an image like this, they'd be able to see, well, okay, we could put stickers along the wall or on use markers on the whiteboard to mark out those increments, and then we could take a picture of that and from that create this grid that we saw on this image. And so using some basic trigonometric ratios, we are going to know that using the tangent from this angle right here, we're going to be able to use, take a look at the opposite side and the adjacent side. And we're, we can measure and know what that adjacent side is, what that distance is from the camera to the board. And we're look, so we're looking at this separation right here. So we can put a blue sticker right here uh, next to the red sticker and know in the picture that that represents five degrees of separation. And then we're going to go on with 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees. Now that 20 degrees is, again, from this shot looking normal. the normal to where this blue dot is. Uh, however, when we are taking a look at the ca camera setup, the two cameras are going to be here and here, and this 20 degree away from the normal is actually being rep is going to be equivalent with a 70 degree angle away from the line that separates the two cameras to this line. And so we find out that these two angles are going to be complementary in all these cases. And so when we create the image the so that we can calculate what the angle is we need to make sure that we mark down that this is a 70 degree not 20 degree separation um, from the camera to the object and then so you just kind of keep on going and until you go to the edge of where the camera is able to see uh, and put these dots onto the board so that this is what the camera would see here at which point you take a picture and you can draw lines through each of the different objects here. We have to, yep. And so that middle one is going to be at 90 degrees as you would see it on a protractor and then 80 degrees on either, or 85 degrees, 80 degrees and so on out going from the middle out. And so that part is all critical to being able to understand what we see here. 
Okay, so now we have a grid system. We have a way of measuring what the angles are, and with those angles, we can now use the law of sines. And so we have the formula for the law of sines, and we'll review that with the students. Uh, because most freshmen have not had the law of sines yet. They've had the trig functions, but not the law of sines. It's not until they get into the second semester or second year of algebra that they get into the law of sines. And so we'll pull that up to uh, reinforce that. And, and we'll use that in several different examinations to, to reinforce that they understand the process. So we'll look at from different distances uh, to, different, to uh, different objects. So in the process, we're calibrating the camera along the way. And we're measuring the three side, the, the, the side between the two cameras, the two angles, and from that getting the two links uh, to the, from the camera to the object. But that's probably not what we really want to have, is we want, really want to have the distance from the object to, say, the center of uh, the two cameras, which would be more like where we're standing when we're taking the picture. And so that would be a, an op operation that would be similar to what you're seeing on now. That um, this picture from the Digital Learning Network um, miniature rover site, this is one of the images from his camera, uh, you can s the triangle that we'd be taking a look at and measuring the lengths of these sides would be this one and this one. This side, this angle, this, yeah, this side does seem to be substantially longer than this one. But again, it kind of depends on how far away that is and what the separation between the cameras are. If the, these two cameras are very close together, these distances may you know, be very uh, close to each other because they're almost, it'll almost be the an same line. Triangle. Yeah, close, and, to an I, close to an isosceles triangle. Um, but the, um, the dash lines that we're seeing here, after we f are able to find out what the two respective sides are uh, using the law of sines, we'd be able to also use this angle that we measured from earlier from our calibrated image and this side to be able to figure out what this side, which would be the distance away from this axis would be, and also be able and then use that uh, side along with the angle to be able to find out what the total distance is off to the side. So in setting this up, you would be able to have the students be able to take an image like this and track where any of the individual rocks are in that image onto something like this, which would be in like an overhead display. And then ideally, we'd uh, take a look and say, oh, well, you know, just from these images, from these live picture feeds, that rock back there, which would be this one here, that one looks interesting. That one looks different than the other ones, and so we want to get a closer look at that. But now there's all these rocks in the way, so we have to maneuver through these. Uh, talk, having spoken to some of the people who actually drive the Mars rovers, um, they don't really have control over the Mars rover like you would think you would control a regular remote control car here on Earth because of the extreme distances between um, Mars and Earth there is usually somewhere between a six to 15 minute window between when you send the commands and then the rover is actually able to execute those commands due to the Mar Mars and Earth's relative position, uh, either in conjunction on the same side of the sun or in opposition. Uh, so those commands may have to travel a very far way away if we're on opposite sides of the sun. And so those commands don't get executed executed immediately, you have to send directions like move forward five feet, turn left 90 degrees, go forward two feet, uh, turn 90 degrees to the right, go forward six more feet. And so we'd want the students to be able to go in and decide on what this sort of path is to be able to get back to the rock in, in question. And that would be kind of one of the big activities at the end so that they'd have to figure out okay how far away is this rock in that direction how far away is this rock and make sure that they're able to go further past that rock before turning going back and figuring out what the total distance is on that rock and um, and then actually simulating the, this in class uh, have the student stand behind a board so they cannot see 
uh, this actual scenario that's been set forward and have other students follow their commands and see if they can actually navigate back to the rock in question. Um, the standards that we have taken a look at um, primarily are the math standards and science standards from Arizona, taking a look at the law of signs, taking a look at the amount of accuracy. Uh, if you take a look at when the cameras are close together or on the stereoscopic um, scenario here, or if they're close together, as opposed to if you move the second camera to the far end, you know, how does that affect the amount of accuracy when you're measuring objects that are further away? Uh, that's one of the things that we, you know, we wouldn't even necessarily tell them that that is more accurate on the outside, but have them measure that and have them discover, you know, why do you want to have a greater separation between those cameras? Which isn't necessarily great for 3D movies. You don't want, always want to shoot it that way if you're wanting to look at the images with your 3D glasses. But if you're trying to make measurements, the greater separation is much better. Um, with in the science standards, uh, we're taking a look at the motion of objects using vectors and components, de demonstrating safe uh, and ethical procedures. We could talk about how all of these different objects are assembled in clean rooms and everything because we don't want to contaminate Mars when you go there just in case there is life. Uh, identify, okay, what resources do they need to be able to do this activity. Um, and, and make sure that they're recording all of their sketches and ideas and journals and charts and everything in their uh, computers. Uh, we also found a couple more Im images through the NASA's website taking a look with the topic of photogrammetry where um, they can attach these small um, decals to the sides of objects and then using f uh, video cameras they can construct 3D models of an object and these seem to be very very accurate in terms of their motion tracking and there's a lot of different uses that we've seen for this. Um, also using handheld devices um, such as uh, cell phones today. There's, there are apps being released on these smartphones where they can actually take a look at the a limb of the earth which is this curvature that they can see and again using the topic of photogrammetry and how can it be used even with this not being a 3D camera on the smartphones you can actually determine from something like this what your elevation is because the closer you get to the earth the, the more this is going to look like a straight line and the further away you get the more curved this line is going to become and so that's a very interesting application of smartphone technology that actually just went up with STS-135 uh, the last shuttle launch that and the those devices are still on the International Space Station um, also uh, using the smartphone this same application but a different uh, part of it. Uh, right here it has a wireframe um, 3D model of the Earth that you can actually rotate, zoom, and place on top of the live photo feed from the camera and actually determine what your longitude and latitude is. Um, part of the what I've seen here at NASA in terms of talking about how um, we're looking forward into the future of space exploration because we're not done going into space. Um, applications like these where they are trying to find uh, easier, cheaper ways of developing the tools that we can use in space to gather the data that we want, fr perhaps from uh, the private sector, is something that is going to speed the development and deployment of these tools. Um, other uh, applications of photogrammetry that may be outside of research or science or math, even though they may will still employ those concepts, but things be things that the students may be more interested in. Uh, topics such as 3D movies, video games, how they do motion capture to create walk cycles of characters, um, how it's employed in CSI, uh, how archaeologists may be able to take pictures of a site and be able to go back 
years later and still gather information from that picture based on uh, newer techniques that have been developed. Um, things in the medical field, um, but other things in the science field, taking a look at paths of, ro of rockets, industrial processes, um, just verifying the results because the more sources of information they have, even if they are also using the LIDAR, using this in addition to that can increase our confidence in those responses. Um, but even without the use of any computers or anything, taking a look at things like uh, lightning strikes uh, or forest fires, if you're trying to figure out where the forest fire is, the Forest Service usually has multiple um, towers set up on top of the uh, hills, the mountains there, so they can take a look in different directions and using maps be able to take a look at the angle to that s smoke from this location and the angle from that s from a separate tower and be able to figure out exactly where the fire is and know where they need to be able to send the people to uh, contain that, uh, which in Arizona with how dry it is is always a big thing. Uh, and uh, even things that the kids are really into such as sports uh, where they always have multiple cameras on the action in sports because one camera might may not just may not be enough uh, to be able to see you know was his foot on the line or not you know did he catch that ball or uh, did he use the field to uh, make that catch and so things like that are applications of photogrammetry that they may already be aware of that uh, you can elicit from them to be able to see that this is something that they may already understand on some levels and be ready to uh, explore more what they want to do with that. Um, the resources for this lesson are going to be made available up on the NEON network um, so that if you are interested more in photogrammetry you can check that out. And, um, we thank you for uh, your time. Thank you.